hey, my talk this year is exactly the same as last year. It's just five minutes longer. Uh, <laughs> so thank you all of you for coming, and hello to everyone uh, uh, on the internet, and shifted through through time uh, on, on YouTube and other uh, places of uh, civic idiocy. Um, uh, thank you to, uh, to, to Vincent uh, for uh, his wonderful work arranging this, and to the Racket developers. Um, he, I'm a sponsor. I just want to make it clear. Uh, Vincent, did I, did I offer to sponsor, and then did you give me the speaking slot, or vice versa? <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> this isn't a pay-to-play, okay? <laughs> what is it? Well, you're, why did he pay then? It's like, because. Free software. I've been around long enough to know it's not free. So uh, I do so much work in Racket now over the last 18 months, and uh, it's just a, a wonderful, incredible tool, and the fact that you don't have to pay for it is mind-boggling. Uh, so to do a sponsorship for this day is you know, the easiest decision I'll ever make. So thank you to all the Racket developers, please. Um, now, I know that some people here you, you know, are experienced Racket developers. I know some people are here out of curiosity. Certainly, people on the internet are like, what's this all about? Look, you know, you go to your day job, like doing an app that tracks unicorn farts, you know, fine. Uh, you know, you come home and you're like, oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to like stream Game of Thrones. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> then I'm going to like grind out, you know, a few more points on Stack Overflow, you know, to get my rep up to 5,300. You know what? You're rearranging the deck chairs in the Titanic because, folks, Racket is such a cool place to be. The quality of brain power in this room, I mean, if you're not in this room, if you're on YouTube, I mean, yeah, I just feel sorry for you, because you could have been at RacketCon. I know there's at least one guy, David, right? You said you weren't here last year, but you saw me and you came, right? So there you go. So I brought one person in. You know what, if we all do that next year, though, it's going to be twice as many people here. So that's my first challenge to you, is, you know, keep finding ways to, uh, to, to spread uh, love of racket around uh, because it's it's easy to love, and I say that you know uh, for those of you who don't know me, I my name is Matthew Butterick. I live in Los Angeles. Um, most of my work these days is in uh, typography, is about typography and design. Typography meaning uh, you know fonts and the arrangement of, of type on the page, and also typesetting, which I want to talk a little more about in a second. Um, so I'm not like a hardcore computer scientist. I come at it from, from a different direction, which is, you know, for me, computer languages and programs are a way, they work for me. You know, it's a way of doing things that would otherwise be difficult or impossible. And I discovered um, uh, Racket last year because I was trying to make this, which is called Butterick's Practical Typography. This is an online book about uh, typography that I've been trying to build for several years, and tool after tool just disappointed me. And finally, I found Racket and, uh, and, and made it. Um, so uh, if you can find a better looking online book, let me know, because I want to crush it. But um, this is all a, uh, a, a Racket uh, hash slang called pollen, which I'm going to, this is what I was showing you before. By the way, this lettering at the top, made with Racket. Thank you. That's the draw library. Hey, Neil Toronto. Yeah, I made that with uh, the plot library, so thank you very much. Uh, I find a lot of silly things to do with Racket, so you can count on me if, if, if you want that. Okay, so um, let me just tell you a little bit about, about what Pollen is and why it's an improvement over... Uh, I mean, essentially, I, I like to think of myself as uh, the Racket community's leading uh, Scribble artiste, right? Because I think of Scribble as just this amazing crown jewel uh, in Racket. We haven't heard much about it today, but I just want to say thank you again to, to Matthew and Ellie and everybody who's worked on it. Scribble is just amazing, um, and there's nothing else like it, people. Does anybody not know what Scribble is? Yeah, okay, well, for those of you playing at home, Scribble was designed, as I understand it, to be Racket's uh, documentation language, but, you know, more broadly, it's a way of taking everything that's good about Racket and making it in a, a syntax that you can use it instead of embedding text within a program, you can embed a program within text. Uh, text. So it, in that regard, it probably has uh, a little more in common with a, a language like tech than, than other things that we're familiar with. Except unlike tech, where when you learn it, all you can do with it is 
tech, um, when you learn uh, Scribble, you, you know Racket, and you can do all the things that Racket can do, and that's just uh, insanely great. So I kind of said about taking, I, I started with Scribble for the, my project, Pollen, and I said, well, how can I adapt this to be more of a general purpose uh, web publishing tool? Um, and uh, so this is what I came up with. And uh, so what uh, Pollen consists of is, it, it, you know, it uses all different parts of, of the, the Racket ecosystem. Um, the major thing that it does is it takes uh, what I call a project server, and you start running this, and it shows you all of these source files, right? Um, so these are all source files in the hashline pollen. So you look at that top one, typography in 10 minutes. So you can go over to uh, Dr. Racket here, and this is, uh, oops, I'm going to show you. There we go. So this is, a, this is a source file in pollen, right? Hashline pollen, and then I go. What should you notice about this? This is like much simpler than writing HTML, and this is a page that's going to produce HTML. And what I, I did is just kind of studied how Scribble does its decoding work and tagging. So notice that there's not, you know, there's no tags for line breaks. There's no tags for paragraphs. That's all automatically done. Um, you know, where I want to do standard HTML tags, I can do them. I can just drop them in. And actually, anything in my Pollen language can be a tag. So you can write, you know, diamond em. You can write diamond dumb tag, whatever. And that'll just become an HTML tag called dumb tag. But the other neat thing is, because anything can be a tag to start, you know, you don't get unbound identifier errors. You can just plow on through. But then you can go back. And because this is all, you know, racket under the hood, you can attach functions to anything and change the behavior of what it does. And just like, you know, we're familiar with in racket, like this LC command up here, that can be a function that takes the letter I as its argument. So if I just left it alone, it's going to become an HTML tag called LC, or I can attach a function to it that might, you know, format it in a different way, or it might expand into something crazy. I, I you know, we don't know. So, um, so what happens is, and the other, so that's one part of it. And then the other part of it here is when I go back to the um, website, so I say, I click on it. Dun -dun. Okay, that's not that impressive. But what's happening here is, <laughs> you're like, well, that we just saw that. But this is actually, um, oh, look, there's a little bug there. Um, this is being dynamically rendered from the source. So it's actually uh, almost a REPL in the web browser. And if I go back to Dr. Racket and I say, call it like topography, oops, topography in 10 minutes, and save it. Oh, God, I hope this works. Yeah, it worked. Okay. Um, so what just happened there? I changed the source file, and that was a whole racket file. It's an entire racket file. It notices that the file has changed, it recompiles the whole thing, and it puts it through the web browser. Pretty cool. Okay. Now, what else can I do with this? Well, I can actually do, uh, uh, I've, I've also added Scribble support. So when I'm working on my Scribble documentation, for instance, I can go in and start another Pollen server instance, go down here to something like tutorial third, and in this case, it shows me that it's, it's going to make this from the tutorial third scribble file. I click on that. Uh, oops, second tutorial. Let's do it. Okay, again, the whole uh, model here is dynamic uh, regeneration of the pages from the source. Okay, so again, if I were to go to the tutorial third and I can say, uh, this is a great conference. I save it. I go back. I reload. Please let it work. Okay. Um, so again, you know, once I'd done all the heavy lifting of putting in this, this dynamic evaluator uh, attached to the web server, I thought it would be fun to be able to preview all of my uh, documentation in it too. So that's uh, what I did. Um, all right, so that's what I've been working on. Now, when I showed up at RackonCon last year, uh, I had really just built a version of the, the system that worked for me. And since then, um, I've had a couple other projects, but what I've tried to do is improve it and make it something that other people would, would want to use, which if anybody has ever done this, who was it that Fred Brooks said it's like a factor of, of nine to one, and that's, uh, I found that certain to be true. But, uh, you know, one of the, the, the best parts of this whole process has been uh, writing the documentation for the, for the software, which I think is probably a lot longer than Butterick's practical typography itself. This is a tutorial I just put up. But, um, you know, I just want, like, want to compliment Scribble itself, because, uh, you know, Scribble is such a great documentation tool that it really kind of challenges you to, to, to bring good documentation to the party. So if you've written Racket software and you haven't done Scribble documentation, I won't say you're doing it wrong, 
but I think you are kind of missing out on part of the fun because one of the, I learned a couple things doing the documentation. The first one is I started the documentation when I thought I was 80% done and it immediately taught me I was only 30% done. It's like, oh, yeah, that doesn't work. The other incredible thing about writing the documentation is that it's like it forces you to, to, to articulate the logic behind certain things. And then I, I found myself talking about certain functions to a, to a future reader and it would sound like a joke being told by a four-year-old. It's like, so then this function, it takes this parameter and then this keyword, oh, and you need to, pa uh, you know, you just, you lose interest. So at that point, you know, you have to go and, and re-engineer your way out of it. Um, so uh, I put up the, uh, the pollen system back in May and, uh, you know, it's made its way around and survived the scrutiny of uh, Hacker News and, and Reddit and all that. And now I'm starting to get mail from people who are using it and it works and they enjoy it. So that's, that's fun to, to see because again, going back to the beginning, I'm not really a professional programmer so much as I am somebody who thinks I know how to do things better than everyone else and <laughs> wants to use Racket as a way of imposing my will on a much greater uh, range of people than I can ordinarily. So, um, and for that, it's wonderful. <laughs> and again, you know, much, much better, I find, than, than, uh, than other programming languages have been. And um, I'm not sure why that is. I just think maybe it's because Racket's so flexible and because it encourages, you know, as, as other speakers have alluded to, you know, the, the, the functional programming paradigm. Uh, someone said that it scales from prototype to, to real deal very quickly. And I, I found all those things to be true. It's like you do it right the first time, and there's just not that much... Uh, you know, restitching that you have to do uh, later. So even though I, I sometimes joke that I'm not a very good programmer, I don't, I mean, again, I know that we're, we're broadcasting to the wide internet. I don't want people to think Racket is for bad programmers. I want people to think that if I can do something of this complexity with Racket, if you have any skills with programming whatsoever, you can just, you can go to Saturn. I mean, that's, and you've seen some of that today, just all the different things that you can do uh, with Racket. So let me tell you about my my uh, upcoming ambitions, uh, you know, with the with the pollen system and, and with Racket. Um, you know, this so far has been sort of a, I mean, it's been great and fun and interesting as a, a web publishing tool. But you know, to me, the bigger and, and greater challenge out there is is to go to like all of typesetting uh, to be able to take it to say PDF, right? Because if you can do PDF, then you can do any like piece of paper or substrate, and then you can do anything. Um, you know, it's interesting that so many of the tools out there for, for doing this stuff are, are just not very good. Uh, and I mean, LaTeX is, is very good at what it does, but it's like, you know, 30 plus years old now. And I think it's kind of a, a amazing that it's, it's lasted that long. But it, part of the reason it's lasted is because, you know, nothing else has been... Uh, it's been proved to have no bugs, so good. <laughs> if you consider lack of Unicode not a bug anymore, right? <laughs> um, uh, it, a wonderful system, but there's a time for everything. You know, and, and lots of great ideas in it. For instance, I uh, implemented uh, the uh, Knuth Lang uh, hyphenation as a separate uh, racket library, and I use it in this. But, um, you know, uh, this whole idea of having like a document compiler that can take a source file, like I showed you before, and uh, take it to multiple uh, uh, platforms, you know, publishing targets, is really more urgent than ever. And I can tell you from uh, many years spent among the uh, short people of the web development community that it, they don't really have anything for this. Uh, so, you know, it's just really true that, you know, Racket, again, because of that, maybe it's because of the, the sort of secret uh, relationship between XML and, and Lisp and so on. But, you know, the combination of, of Scribble and, you know, the scheme, you know, expression-based language and, uh, you know, the fact that you can do these domain-specific languages come together and I think make Racket a real ideal platform for, for typesetting and publishing. And before you laugh at that, you know, billions and billions of dollars have been made in that field. So it's actually a good, uh, interesting uh, a place to be and still a lot of, of need for it. So uh, I'm going to keep uh, exploring that aspect of it and hopefully, I don't know, I mean, I would like to, to make Pollen capable of, if not doing everything that LaTeX can, uh, I don't, I'm not, I'd like to let it at least be able to do math and scientific typesetting. Um, so I, to, to all of you, I say, if you have you know, books or projects that you'd be interested, I mean, I've thought of this as a book publishing system. Uh, what I need, though, are more uh, difficult projects to challenge with. I mean, this practical typography kind of called on a lot of, you know, uh, crazy stuff to get it to look right. But, so that's really how pollen gets better, is I keep kind of uh, forcing it to do uh, new and better things and, and keep adding to it. So, uh, so far, so good.
that's it for me. Any questions? Yes, sir. So have, have you talked to Donald Knuth about your typesetting opinions? I, he doesn't talk to anybody. Uh, no, he does. Does he? Yeah. You know, we almost ran into each other at a conference last year, and I'm sorry I missed him. I would have said something to him about it, but uh, uh, who knows? Maybe, maybe uh, someday. Also, lot, the tech is being rewritten, so maybe you could jump into that and say, no, use Racket. Uh, tech is being rewritten? Yeah. <laughs> Let them have it, uh, <laughs> is what I say. <laughs> no! Really, I mean, every technology has a time. Why can't we let technologies die? I mean, it's it's like tech has had a, just a wonderful, wonderful run, and it's still going to be around forever because there's so much, you know, so many documents already written in it. But um, have we learned nothing over the last 30 years? I mean, I have the five volume uh, computers and typography. You know, I mean, Knuth like did amazing things, and I think to me the great lesson from from his work and from looking through t you know tech is is like you just don't have to settle for like the way everybody else does it i mean the idea that he circumvented everything and said i'm going to do all the layout and the typesetting and right down to the fonts myself by the way i've designed all these typefaces in this uh, book as well um, so it's like i love that idea of control and that you can kind of make your own world so um, direct output from scribble to pdf um, well, you can. We, the, how we do that today is through uh, LaTeX, right? That's true. So, uh, yeah, I'm talking about getting rid of the LaTeX part. Please. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a system called um, Pataline, I think it's pronounced, um, which is uh, somewhat similar. It's based on uh, OCaml, but it also allows you to um, uh, to put functional um, programs uh, as macros. Um, are you aware of that? And if you are aware of it, how does it compare to pollen? I, I'm I'm aware of so little. Uh, it's like it. In, <laughs> well, it's funny. You know, people wonder why do we reinvent the wheel? Because we didn't know we needed a wheel at the outset. If we knew we needed a wheel, then we wouldn't reinvent it. I mean, for me, it's been a question. Again, I'm kind of this goal-oriented person. I'm like, what's the next thing I need to do, and how do I do it? it uh, you know. So yeah, there are other. I'm not the first person to come up with these ideas, uh, but I no, think uh, Racket thousand. is a fun way of combining them all. Let a thousand flowers bloom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes, sir. Have you typed that diamond? Diamond. Yeah, you know, I changed the control character because I was using the at sign so much. I'm sorry, I love the at sign, but I don't like escaping it all the time. So the diamond character is called a lozenge, and I picked it because it doesn't occur anywhere for anything. And it's actually in the sort of standard 250 character set of most fonts, so it's already in, in the fonts. All right, maybe one more question? Um, sorry. Okay. Uh, it, it looks to me like um, w one of the big differences between uh, one of the big changes that that uh, Pollen makes from Scribble is its approach to scoping. If I understood you correctly, uh, it sounds like uh, you've made a decision to allow those bindings to be dynamic, and that if, if something's not bound, if I say lozenge, you know, e em, and there is no e em, that <clears throat> instead of saying that's unbound, we're just going to say, oh, it just turns straight into a tag. Um, can you comment at all on that decision? I mean. You know, you started the question, I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to have no idea what he's talking about at the end. But then I kind of understood. No, I do understand what you're saying. Yes, uh, I don't like to get unbound identifier errors because as a writer, I want to tag first, you know, it's like shoot first, ask questions later. Tag first, ask questions about what the tags mean later. And as I'm writing, I'm trying to capture my ideas. And I found it just kind of impeded the flow too much to be like, well, now I have to go, what, stub out a little function so it doesn't complain at me. So I actually redefined, uh, I forget how to pronounce the da -da -da top top, hash percent top. So what happens is when some an undefined identifier hits top, it just becomes a tag. It's, that's a default function. And if I want the opposite behavior, if I want to force uh, it to be a defined term, I have something called def slash c, which you just wrap it and then you get the normal behavior. It says this has to be a defined term or it's not going to count. Uh, I would, you know, but uh, does that answer the question? So that's kind of how it, it does it. It's just about kind of preserving the writing flow. And in a lot of cases, you don't end up needing or wanting to attach extra functionality. You're happy with just the tag as it stands. So it just ends up being uh, a lot of busy work to have to define them all ahead of time. Okay, let's give our speaker one more round of applause. <laughs>